Do you know what water gel beads are for centerpieces? How about dragon balls? Yep, dragon balls. Apparently there's a thing on the internet called dragon balls that are used for centerpieces and water. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing the two and showing you how you can incorporate them into your next centerpiece. Now, dragon ball beads start out the same way as regular water beads do for your centerpieces. Nice and small, they sit in water, they get bigger and bigger. They do take a little, little bit more time than regular gel beads do, but they get much larger, so it's worth the wait. Let's dive in and see how these two water gel bead sizes compare when making a basic centerpiece. I'm gonna be using this bag of just gemstone filler that I picked up for a dollar at a local tag sale. And I'm gonna be doing it in two dollar store vases. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna do one like I would normally with the regular gel beads. And I'm gonna do the second one with some of the dragon balls that are much harder to see that are much, um, I wanna say almost clear or diluted um, color to them. So you can see how they hold up because submerging elements in water beads, large or small, is always really popular. It's usually very cost effective. And if you Google um, submerged flower centerpieces on Pinterest, there's a million and a half different ways to do that. Um, but stones are a little bit trickier because of their weight. So I'm just putting about a handful into both at the bottom. So the bottom is covered. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a handful and I'm going to put in one. And then you're going to think at first this looks crazy, like this doesn't look good, but wait till the water is added. Bear with me. So what I want to do is I want to see how they handle about midway with a layer of beads to see how they hold up. And then I'll put more beads in on a layer at top. So for this one, I'm going to be very gentle and pick up some of the ones that I have that are the most clear. And I'm going to gently place them in. It's hard to find them, but they're there. And some of them have little tints too, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just trying to gently pick them up and slide them in. I'm picking and choosing from a few different buckets that I have here just to make sure I get the clearest ones. Because um, like I said, some of them do have a little bit of a milky tint to them. And most of these have, I would say, a green-blue tint to them. Um, they're hardly saturated um, as far as color goes. So if you can tell, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about ten of the larger ones. And obviously because of their size, it's going to be easy for some of these stones to slip through them but how far down they go will be the most interesting part. So we're going to put a handful or two just gently on top of here. And then the real interesting part is just putting them gently on top of the dragon beads to see where they disperse to. Because remember, when we add water, this theoretically should make the dragon beads become invisible again. Now because they've fallen a little bit, I'm putting a little bit extra on top. Different looks though. And then we'll put the final layer of gel beads, the small ones in. Oops. We lost one to our water. You, I'm not sure if you could tell, but I'm using a scooping movement with my hand so as to not damage these at all. Okay. I think that's about good. Put a little bit more in. And then we'll put uh, some more of the dragon balls in here. Oops. You can see, I'm not sure if you could tell or not, but my nail nicked that one on the way down. Um, so you have to be very, very careful when working with these. So we're about at capacity here with just a few of them added in. And I'm just using a regular one cup scoop to gently pour in the water. If you've ever done this before, you know the key is to be gentle. But watch it what happens with the clear gel beads. They just become invisible, like you don't know that they're there. So you get this really cool look. So now it looks like there is just floating rocks. And you get a nice little texture at the top. So let's see what happens when we do the same thing with the Dragon Balls. I'm 
Okay, so you do get a similar effect in the sense that it's a clear liquid for the most part, except for because there are um, some tints to the Dragon Balls that are in here, it gives it a little bit more of a, um, a natural look. So definitely if you're looking to create like a pond or a fishing centerpiece, this could be really helpful if you put some fish in there. Whereas this, because it's so clear and crystal like, like purified water, they just create different effects. So if you like the light tints of the different blues and greens that are in here from the Dragon Balls, go this way. If you don't and you're looking for a crystal clear look, stick with the regular sized gel beads. So what are your thoughts? Regular gel beads, Dragon Ball gel beads, all sorts of cool different colors, so many possibilities for centerpieces and table decor. I would love to know in the comment section down below how you plan on incorporating these into your own look or if you're like, no, I don't like them. I don't want to deal with them. By all means, let me know what you think down below. Consider subscribing if you're interested in this type of video because I have a 2017 tablescape challenge going on right now where I am sharing at least a few tablescapes each month based on DIY thrift store decor that I've put together on a budget. And for the holidays come up, you are going to want to be subscribed and see what I'm making because I've already got some amazing ideas lined up. Like this video if you learned something. And again, comment down below. What are you going to do with these dragon beads?